Hayabusa was an unmanned spacecraft developed by the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency to return a sample of material from a small near-Earth asteroid named 25143 Itakawa to Earth for further analysis. Hayabusa, formerly known as Muses C for Mu Space Engineering Spacecraft C, was launched on May 9, 2003 and rendezvoused with Itakawa in mid-September 2005. After arriving at Itakawa, Hayabusa studied the asteroid's shape, spin, topography, color, composition, density, and history. In November 2005, it landed on the asteroid and collected samples in the form of tiny grains of asteroidal material, which were returned to Earth aboard the spacecraft on June 13, 2010. The spacecraft also carried a detachable minilander, Minerva, which failed to reach the surface. Mission Firsts other spacecraft, notably Galileo and Near Shoemaker both sent by NASA, have visited asteroids before, but the Hayabusa mission was the first time that an attempt was made to return an asteroid sample to Earth for analysis. In addition, Hayabusa was the first spacecraft designed to deliberately land on an asteroid and then take off again. Technically, Hayabusa was not designed to land. It simply touches the surface with its sample capturing device and then moves away. However, it was the first craft designed from the outset to make physical contact with the surface of an asteroid. Junikira Kawaguchi of the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science was appointed to be the leader of the mission. Despite its designer's intention of a momentary contact, Hayabusa did land and sit on the asteroid surface for about 30 minutes. Mission Profile the Hayabusa spacecraft was launched on May 9, 2003 at 4.29 and 25 seconds UTC on an MV rocket from the Ikenura Space Center. Following launch, the spacecraft's name was changed from the original Muses C to Hayabusa, the Japanese word for Falcon. The spacecraft's xenon ion engines, operating near continuously for two years, slowly moved Hayabusa toward a September 2005 rendezvous with Itakawa. As it arrived, the spacecraft did not go into orbit around the asteroid, but remained in a station keeping heliocentric orbit close by. Hayabusa surveyed the asteroid surface from a distance of about 20 km. After this the spacecraft moved closer to the surface, and then approached the asteroid for a series of soft landings and for the collection of samples at a safe site. Autonomous optical navigation was employed extensively during this period because the long communication delay prohibits Earth-based real-time commanding. At the second Hayabusa touchdown with its deployable collection horn, the spacecraft was programmed to fire tiny projectiles at the surface and then collect the resulting spray. Some tiny specks were collected by the spacecraft for analysis back on Earth. After a few months in proximity to the asteroid, the spacecraft was scheduled to fire its engines to begin its cruise back to Earth. This maneuver was delayed due to problems with attitude control and the thrusters of the craft. Once it was on its return trajectory, the re-entry capsule was released from the main spacecraft three hours before re-entry, and the capsule coasted on a ballistic trajectory, re-entering the Earth's atmosphere at 1351, June 13, 2010 UTC. It is estimated that the capsule experienced peak deceleration of about 25 g and heating rates approximately 30 times those experienced by the Apollo spacecraft. It landed via parachute near Woomera, Australia. In relation to the mission profile, JAXA defined the following success criteria and corresponding scores for major milestones in the mission prior to the launch of the Hayabusa spacecraft. As it shows, the Hayabusa spacecraft is a platform for testing new technology and the primary objective of the Hayabusa project is the world's first implementation of microwave discharge ion engines. Hence operation of ion engines for more than 1,000 hours is an achievement that gives a full score of 100 points, and the rest of the milestones are a series of world's first time experiments built on it. Minerva Mini Lander, Hayabusa carried a tiny mini lander, and approximately 10 a cm tall by 12 a cm in diameter, named Minerva. An error during deployment resulted in the craft's failure. This solar-powered vehicle was designed to take advantage of Itakawa's very low gravity by using an internal flywheel assembly to hop across the surface of the asteroid, 
relaying images from its cameras to Hayabusa whenever the two spacecraft were in sight of one another. Minerva was deployed on November 12, 2005. The Lander Release Command was sent from Earth, but before the command could arrive, Hayabusa's altimeter measured its distance from Itikawa to be 44 a.m. and thus started an automatic altitude keeping sequence. As a result, when the Minerva Release Command arrived, Minerva was released while the probe was ascending and at a higher altitude than intended, so that it escaped Itikawa's gravitational pull and tumbled into space. Had it been successful, Minerva would have been the first space hopper to see action. Instead it joins ranks with the hopper carried on the failed Phobos II mission, which also never saw use. Scientific and engineering importance of the mission, scientists' current understanding of asteroids depends greatly on meteorite samples, but it is very difficult to match up meteorite samples with the exact asteroids from which they came. Hayabusa will help solve this problem by bringing back pristine samples from a specific, well-characterized asteroid. Hayabusa bridged the gap between ground observation data of asteroids and laboratory analysis of meteorite and cosmic dust collections. Also comparing the data from the inboard instruments of the Hayabusa with the data from the near Shoemaker mission will put the knowledge on a wider level. The Hayabusa mission has a very deep engineering importance for JAXA-2. It allowed JAXA to further test its technologies in the fields of ion engines, autonomous and optical navigation, deep space communication, and close movement on objects with low gravity among others. Second, since it was the first ever pre-planned soft contact with the surface of an asteroid it has enormous influence on further asteroid missions. Changes in mission plan the Hayabusa mission profile was modified several times, both before and after launch. The spacecraft was originally intended to launch in July 2002 to the asteroid 4660 Narius 1989 milliliters was considered as an alternative target. However, a July 2000 failure of Japan's M5 rocket forced a delay in the launch, putting both Narius and 1989 milliliters out of reach. As a result, the target asteroid was changed to 1998 SF-36, which was soon thereafter named for Japanese rocket pioneer Hideo Itakawa. Hayabusa was to deploy a small rover supplied by NASA and developed by JPL, called Musa CN, onto the surface of the asteroid, but the rover was cancelled by NASA in November 2000 due to budget constraints. In 2002, Launch was postponed from December 2002 to May 2003 to recheck the O rings of its reaction control system since one of them had been found to be using a different material than specified. In 2003, while Hayabusa was en route to Itikawa, a large solar flare damaged the solar cells aboard the spacecraft. This reduction in electrical power reduced the efficiency of the ion engines, thus, delaying the arrival at Itikawa from June to September 2005. Since orbital mechanics dictated that the spacecraft still had to leave the asteroid by November 2005, the amount of the time it was able to spend at Itikawa was greatly reduced and the number of landings on the asteroid was reduced from 3 to 2. In 2005, two reaction wheels that govern the attitude movement of Hayabusa failed. The X-axis wheel failed on July 31, and the Y-axis on October 2. After the latter failure, the spacecraft was still able to turn on its X and Y axes with its thrusters. JAXA claimed that since global mapping of Itikawa had been completed, this was not a major problem, but the mission plan was altered. The failed reaction wheels were manufactured by Atharco Space Systems, Inc., New York, which was later acquired by Goodrich Company. The 4 November 2005, rehearsal landing on Itikawa failed, and was rescheduled. The original decision to sample two different sites on the asteroid was changed when one of the sites, Woomera Desert, was found to be too rocky for a safe landing. The 12 November 2005, release of the Minerva Manip probe ended in failure. Mission Timeline Up to the launch, the asteroid exploration mission by the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science originated in 1986 Euro 1987 when the scientists investigated the feasibility of a sample return mission to Antiros and concluded that the technology was not yet developed. Between 1987 and 1994, 
joint ISAS-NASA group studied several missions, an asteroid rendezvous mission later became NEAR, and a comet sample return mission later became Stardust. In 1995, ISAS selected the asteroid sampling as an engineering demonstration mission, Muses C, Nereus as the first choice of target, 1989 milliliters as the secondary choice, and Muses C project started in fiscal year 1996. In early development phase, Nereus was considered out of reach and 1989 milliliters became the primary target. July 2000 failure of MV forced a delay in the launch from July 2002 to November-December, putting both Nereus and 1989 milliliters out of reach. As a result, the target asteroid was changed to 1998 SF-36. In 2002, launch was postponed from December 2002 to May 2003 to recheck O-rings of reaction control system since one of it was found using different material and specification. On May 9, 2003 for 29 and 25 seconds UTC, Muses-C was launched by MV rocket, and the probe was named Hayabusa. Cruising, ion thruster checkout started on May 27, 2003. Full power operation started on June 25. Asteroids are named by their discoverer. ISAS asked Linear, the discoverer of 1998 SF-36, to offer the name after Hideo Itakawa, and on August 6, Minor Planet Circular reported that the target asteroid 1998 SF-36 was named Itakawa. On October 2003, ISAS and two other national aerospace agencies were merged to form JAXA. On March 31, 2004, ion thruster operation was stopped to prepare for the Earth swing by. Last maneuver operation before swing by on May 12. On May 19, Hayabusa performed Earth swing by. On May 27, ion thruster operation was started again. On February 18, 2005, Hayabusa passed Aphelion at 1.7 AU. On July 31, the X-axis reaction wheel failed. On August 14, Hayabusa's first image of Itakawa was released. The picture was taken by the star tracker and shows a point of light, believed to be the asteroid, moving across the star field. Other images were taken from 22 to August 24. On August 28, Hayabusa was switched over from the ion engines to the B propellant thrusters for orbital maneuvering. From September 4, Hayabusa's cameras were able to confirm Itakawa's elongated shape. From September 11, individual hills were discerned on the asteroid. On September 12, Hayabusa was 20 km from Itakawa and JAXA scientists announced that Hayabusa had officially arrived. In proximity of Itakawa, on September 15, 2005, a color image of the asteroid was released. On October 4, JAXA announced that the spacecraft had successfully moved to its home position 7 km from Itakawa. Close-up pictures were released. It was also announced that the spacecraft's second reaction wheel, governing the Y-axis, had failed, and that the craft was now being pointed by its rotation thrusters. On November 3, Hayabusa took station 3.0 km from Itakawa. It then began its descent, planned to include delivery of a target marker, and release of the Minerva Minilander. The descent went well initially, and navigation images with wide-angle cameras were obtained. However, at 1.50 a.m. UTC on November 4, it was announced that due to a detection of an anomalous signal at the go-no-go -no -go decision, the descent, including release of Minerva and the target marker had been cancelled. The project manager, Junaikira Kawaguchi, explained that the optical navigation system was not tracking the asteroid very well, probably caused by the complex shape of Itakawa. A few days' delay was required to evaluate the situation and reschedule. On November 7, Hayabusa was 7.5 km from Itakawa. On November 9, Hayabusa performed a descent to 70 m to test the landing navigation and the laser altimeter. After that, Hayabusa backed off to a higher position, then descended again to 500 m and released one of the target markers into space to test the craft's ability to track it. From analysis of the close-up images, 
the Woomera Desert site was found to be too rocky to be suitable for landing. The Muses Sea site was selected as the landing site, for both first and, if possible, second landings. On November 12, Hayabusa closed into 55M from the asteroid's surface. Minerva was released but due to an error failed to reach the surface. On November 19, Hayabusa landed on the asteroid. There was considerable confusion during and after the maneuver about precisely what had happened, because the high-gain antenna of the probe could not be used during final phase of touchdown, as well as the blackout during handover of ground station antenna from DSN to Yusuda station. It was initially reported that Hayabusa had stopped at approximately 10 meters from the surface, hovering for 30 minutes for unknown reasons. Ground Control sent a command to abort and ascend, and by the time the communication was regained, the probe had moved 100 km away from the asteroid. The probe had entered into a safe mode, slowly spinning to stabilize attitude. However, after regaining control and communication with the probe, the data from the landing attempt were downloaded and analyzed, and on November 23, JAXA announced that the probe had indeed landed on the asteroid's surface. Unfortunately, the sampling sequence was not triggered since a sensor detected an obstacle during descent. The probe tried to abort the landing, but since its attitude was not appropriate for ascent, it chose instead a safe descent mode. This mode did not permit a sample to be taken, but there is a high probability that some dust may have whirled up into the sampling horn when it touched the asteroid, so the sample canister currently attached to the sampling horn was sealed. On November 25, a second touchdown attempt was performed. It was initially thought that this time, the sampling device was activated. However, later analysis decided that this was probably another failure and that no pellets were fired. Due to a leak in the thruster system, the probe was put in a safe hold mode. On November 30, JAXA announced that control and communication with Hayabusa had been restored, but a problem remained with the craft's reaction control system, perhaps involving a frozen pipe. Mission Control was working to resolve the problem before the craft's upcoming launch window for return to Earth. On December 6, Hayabusa was 550 a km from Itikawa. JAXA held a press conference about the situation so far. On November 27, the probe experienced a power outage when trying attitude correction probably due to a fuel leakage. On December 2, an attitude correction was attempted, but the thruster did not generate enough force. On December 3, the probe's z-axis was found to be 20 to 30 degrees from the sun direction and increasing. On December 4, as an emergency measure, xenon propellant from the ion engines was blown to correct the spin, and it was confirmed successful. Attitude control was commanded using the xenon gas. On December 5, attitude was corrected enough to regain communication through the medium gain antenna. Telemetry was obtained and analyzed. As the result of telemetry analysis, it was found that there was a strong possibility that the sampler projectile had not penetrated when it landed on November 25. Due to the power outage, the telemetry log data was faulty. On December 8, a sudden attitude change was observed, and communication with Hayabusa was lost. It was thought likely that the turbulence was caused by evaporation of 8 or 10 cc of leaked fuel. This forced a wait of a month or two for Hayabusa to stabilize by conversion of precession to pure rotation, after which the rotation axis needed to be directed toward the Sun and Earth within a specific angular range. The probability of achieving this was estimated at 60% by December 2006, 70% by Spring 2007. Recovery and Return to Earth On March 7, 2006, JAXA announced that communication with Hayabusa had been recovered in the following stages. On January 23, the beacon signal from the probe was detected. On January 26, the probe responded to commands from ground control by changing beacon signal. On February 6, an ejection of xenon propellant was commanded for attitude control to improve communication. The spin axis change rate was about 2 degrees per day. On February 25, telemetry data was obtained through low-gain antenna. On March 4, 
telemetry data was obtained through medium gain antenna. On March 6, Hayabusa's position was established at about 13,000 km ahead of Itikawa in its orbit with a relative speed of 3 m per second. On June 1, Hayabusa project manager Junikira Kawaguchi reported that they confirmed two out of four ion engines work normally, which would be sufficient for the return journey. On January 30, 2007, JAXA reported that seven out of eleven batteries are working and the return capsule was sealed. On April 25, JAXA reported that Hayabusa started the return journey. On August 29, it was announced that ion engine seen board Hayabusa, in addition to B&E, has been successfully reignited. On October 29, JAXA reported that the first phase of trajectory maneuver operation has finished and the spacecraft is now put in spin-stabilized state. On February 4, 2009, JAXA reported success in reignition of ion engines and starting second phase of trajectory correction maneuver to return to the Earth. On November 4, 2009, the ion engine D automatically stopped working due to the anomaly from degradation. On November 19, 2009, JAXA announced that they managed to combine the ion generator of ion engine B and the neutralizer of ion engine A. It is suboptimal but expected to be sufficient to generate the necessary delta V. Out of 2,200 meters per second delta V necessary to return to the Earth, about 2,000 meters per second had been performed already, and about 200 meters per second still necessary. On March 5, 2010, Hayabusa was on a trajectory that would have passed within the lunar orbit. Ion engine operation was suspended to measure the precise trajectory in preparation to perform trajectory correction maneuver 1 to the Earth rim trajectory. On March 27, 0617 UTC, Hayabusa was on a trajectory which would pass 20,000 km from Earth center, completing the orbit transfer operation from Itikawa to Earth. By April 6, completed first stage of trajectory correction maneuver which controlled coarsely to earth rim trajectory. It was planned to be 60 days before re-entry. By May 4, completed TCM-1 maneuver to control precisely to earth rim trajectory. On May 22, TCM-2 started, continued for about 92.5 hours, and finished on May 26. TCM-3 from 3 through June 5 to change the trajectory from the Earth rim to Woomera, South Australia, TCM-4 was performed on June 9 for about 2.5 hours for a precision control to Woomera prohibited area. The re-entry capsule was released at 10.51 UTC of June 13. Re-entry and capsule retrieval The re-entry capsule and the spacecraft re-entered to the Earth atmosphere on June 13, 2010 at 13.51 UTC. The heat-shielded capsule made a parachute landing in the South Australian outback while the spacecraft broke up and incinerated in a large fireball. An international team of scientists observed the 12.2 km per second entry of the capsule from 11.9 km on board NASA's DC-8 Airborne Laboratory, using a wide array of imaging and spectrographic cameras to measure the physical conditions during atmospheric re-entry in a mission led by NASA's Ames Research Center with Peter Janiskens of the SETI Institute as the project scientist. Since the reaction control system no longer functioned, the 510 kg space probe re-entered the Earth's atmosphere similar to the approach of an asteroid along with the sample re-entry capsule, and, as mission scientists expected, the majority of the spacecraft disintegrated upon entry. The return capsule was predicted to land in a 20 km by 200 km area in the Woomera prohibited area, South Australia. Four ground teams surrounded this area and located the re-entry capsule by optical observation and a radio beacon. Then a team on board a helicopter was dispatched. They located the capsule and recorded its position with GPS. The capsule was successfully retrieved at 7.08 UTC of June 14, 2010. The two parts of the heat shield, which were jettisoned during the descent, were also found. After confirming that the explosive devices used for parachute deployment were safe the capsule was packed inside a double layer of plastic bags filled with pure nitrogen gas to reduce the risk of contamination. 
the soil at the landing site was also sampled for reference in case of contamination. Then the capsule was put inside a cargo container which had air suspension to keep the capsule below 1.5 G shock during transportation. The capsule and its heat shield parts were transported to Japan by a chartered plane and arrived at the curation facility at the JAXAISAS Sajimayara campus on June 18. Before the capsule was extracted from the protecting plastic bag, it was inspected using X-ray CT to determine its condition. Then the sample canister was extracted from the re-entry capsule. The surface of the canister was cleaned using pure nitrogen gas and carbon dioxide. It was then placed in the canister opening device. The internal pressure of the canister was determined by a slight deformation of the canister as the pressure of the environment nitrogen gas in the clean chamber was varied. The nitrogen gas pressure was then adjusted to match the internal canister pressure to prevent the escape of any gas from the sample upon the opening of the canister. On October 7, 2010, it was announced that approximately 100 particles were collected by the sample canister, and stated that some may be cosmic materials. The particles are smaller than 0.001 mm. In November, JAXA performed detailed analyses of the samples by splitting each particle and examining their crystal structure at Spring 8. The government adviser and former Lieutenant General, Toshiyuki Shikata, stated that part of the rationale for the re-entry and landing part of the mission was to demonstrate that Japan's ballistic missile capability is credible. Confirmation of Asteroid Particles On November 16, 2010, JAXA confirmed that most of the particles found in one of two compartments inside the Hayabusa sample return capsule came from Itikawa. Analysis with a scanning electron microscope identified about 1,500 grains as rocky particles, according to the JAXA press release. After further studying the analysis results in comparison of mineral compositions, most of them were judged to be of extraterrestrial origin, and definitely from the asteroid Itakawa. According to Japanese scientists, the composition of Hayabusa's samples was more similar to meteorites than known rocks from Earth. Their size is mostly less than 10 micrometers. The material matches chemical maps of Itakawa from Hayabusa's remote sensing instruments. The researchers found concentrations of olivine and pyroxene in the Hayabusa samples. Further study of the samples had to wait until 2011 because researchers were still developing special handling procedures to avoid contaminating the particles during the next phase of research. Results The August 26, 2011, issue of Science devoted six articles to findings based on dust collected by Hayabusa. Scientists' analysis of the dust from Itikawa suggested that it had probably originally been part of a larger asteroid. Dust collected from the asteroid surface was believed to have been exposed there for about 8 million years. Dust from Itikawa was found to be identical to material that makes up meteorites. Itikawa is an S-type asteroid whose composition matches that of an LL chondrite. In popular culture, in Japan, rival film companies announced the production of three different feature-length theatrical films based on the story of Hayabusa, one of which, Hayabusa. Haruka Narukaiken, starred Ken Watanabe. The Lego Construction Toy Company released a model of Hayabusa through their Kyusu website. Many references to Hayabusa appear in the Japanese series Kamen Rider Falls, a space-themed tokusatsu series. A music video titled Hayabusa, named after the unmanned spacecraft was made using the vocaloid Hatsune Miku. The music and lyrics were composed by SHO. See also Hayabusa 2, References Further reading, Fujiwara, AAL Hayabusa at Asteroid Itakawa. Science 312, 1327 Euro 1353. doi, 10.1126-science. 312-5778-1327. PMIDA 16741105 Hiroi, T. Abe. M. Kitazato, K. A. S. Clark, B. E. Sasaki, S. Ishiguro, M. and Banu Injar, O. S. Developing Space Weathering on the Asteroid 25143 Itakawa. Nature 443, 
56 a euro 58. Bib code, 2006 NATO 443. 56 H DOI, 10.1038 slash NATO 5073. PMIDA 16957724A, Normal, D Spunky Hayab is a heads home with possible payload. Science 328, 565. Bib code, 2010 Psi. 328565 NDOI, 10.1126 Science. 328.5978.565. PMIDA 20430991A, External links, ISASJAXA page on the mission, Hayabaza's seven year journey in space at YouTube, ISASJAXA Hayabaza mission movie, The Great Challenges of Hayabaza Euro World's First Asteroid Sample Return Mission A Euro Official JAXA YouTube Channel, ISASJAXA Hayabaza Today, Hayabaza's Scientific and Engineering Achievements During Proximity Operations Around Itakawa, the 37th Lunar and Planetary Science Conference has special session on results of the Hayabaza mission, and a poster session results of the Hayabaza mission, the 42nd Lunar and Planetary Science Conference. Has special session on results from Hayabaza, special issue, Hayabaza at Asteroid Itakawa, Science, Vol 312, Issue 5778, pages 1273 Euro 1407, June 2, 2006, Initial Scientific Results of Hayabaza's Investigation on Itakawa Summary of the Special Issue of Science Magazine, Hayabaza Project Science Data Archive, JAXA Details of Mission and Probe Euro with June 2010 Re-Entry Strategy, Dead Link, NASA Ames Video of Hayabaza Spacecraft's Re-Entry on YouTube, NASA Team Captures Hayabaza Spacecraft Re-Entry at NASA, JAXA Hayabaza Mission Re-Entry Capsule Photos and Videos by Australian Science Media Centre, JAXA Today No. 2